No worries. Um, I mean, I have as much time as there is time before the class. So. Okay. Actually, Sorry, I asked him when, and he told me um, last night using kind of food L to solve the gap problem. Did it work? Yes, it worked. Okay. It worked. Okay. But, but I had to want to know if there is an other way. It does F map work or? I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah, maybe so basically yeah. the idea is mm -hmm. something so you you know that bread first search right yeah 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 it's, it's so just like it is just it. like bread first search so imagine that like, i don't know what it is called in inventory so there are like several this is like my queue right right and i want to produce this list except that this will be an infinite list mm -hmm. so what i will do is let's say i have been given um I'm trying to remember. So let's say that I have like these many lists, like I'm calling it trees or let's call it trees. Right, right. right? It's okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah, actually you can we can do that. Uh, so I have this function which projects the root. Like let's call that function root, like given a tree produces the root. Okay. So yeah, I can I could use if map or map, like so. This is a list of the roots of those things. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Is okay, it okay? okay yeah. So I produce the roots, and then next level need to compare with. Oh, actually, so collect map root. Uh, uh, collect. Uh, yeah. So I need to go like. Uh, yeah, we need to have. So four. then the left trees and then the right trees. Right, right, Is it right. like that? Right. Did Did the tests work? So I'm thinking yeah. it's like. Hi. You wanted to say something? Yeah, I have a question. Uh, give me a minute, please. So actually, I will write it like that. So let's say that I have this. Mm -hmm. So this is the first tree, and that is the other trees. Right. So I do root t. Mm -hmm. This is what I output, mm -hmm. and then I uh, for what I have. Mm -hmm. Uh, I already have T's in the queue. I to the end of the queue, I can add like a left T. Oh, and add right. Okay, yeah. I see. So, like whatever is here, like we will get the roots of these things next, and then it will come to this, and their roots will be presented, and then their left end things. Uh, will oh, be right, smart. Oh, yeah, it's it's more shorter than I have. Yeah, so you can uh, write it like that. Uh, what do you call it? Four gray. And the name yeah, of the yeah, name yeah. is four. Four root three one. left yes. three right. right. So then R. So this won't be plus plus because that's a typo. Like it's a points, not a. Right. There is that's a difference. It's all one element. Yeah, not a. Yeah. So yeah, Haskell will like shout at you if you don't get that correct, but that's a smart. Thing. So yeah, it's something like that. Yeah, what do you want to say? Yeah, I wanted to know what to access this thing is for. Yeah. So basically like this. So like let's say this is the first there is a list of trees. Hmm. And you want to look look at the first one and pattern match on it and like let's say extract the left subtree and the right subtree of it. You can do okay, it like that. Okay, so I you pattern match and you bind the things to names. Okay. Yeah. In the lectures, like I have done it for like sh like rectangle and square, it is kind of like that.
paste So hi everyone, I guess we will start in a few minutes, but in the meantime, you could look at a few things on the screen. So the first thing is this logo of Haskell. Here is the Lambda of course, but uh, on the sides of this Lambda, the thing you see is the bind symbol, which we were talking about in the last class. And another interesting thing I'm trying to show in this slide, which is borrowed from an interesting talk. And I have linked this talk in the course homepage which you probably have the link to. So there are different scenarios here. So I have a bread and I want to make burger from the bread. So there are a lots of possibilities. One possibility is if the burger is moldy, then I throw an error that there is a moldy burger and I don't make the uh, bread burger from that bread. If there is a list of breads, I make a list of burgers and it might be the case that there is some burger or uh, some bread or not, in which case, depending on whether there is a bread, I make the burger. And the other possibility is that in the future, and I guess future is a JavaScript concept. I don't know very much about it. So in the future, there might be bread. And when you get the bread, we will make bread burgers in the future, but that going to be burgers in the future, not burgers in the present. So in some other language, you might have different ways to talk about this. It might be a try catch block or a for loop or something else. Uh, but in a Haskell application, we might want to think of all of these things as functors. So here, all of these things in all of these cases, I am using the functor and uh, the functorial uh, method called fmap. So he, this one is a familiar case that the fmap in the case of lists is uh, is it's basically just map it, it like applies this function to burger to each of the breads. And in the case of maybe it's the, there is like this type in Haskell called maybe you can use the if map method. And if it is, if there is a burger, it, if there is just bread, then it produces just burger. Otherwise, if there is nothing, it does nothing. And there are like these other things could also be thought of as functors. Um, so yeah, that's a cool way of understanding how these functors are very useful and they allow us to unify a lot of these concepts. But uh, let's move on to today's lecture. One moment. So before I start, I 
want to recap a little bit about some of the aspects of IO I talked about yesterday. So there were different interfaces, so to speak, that was available for IO. So first of all, IO was a, a functor, and that mean that meant that like IO had this method called if map, which we could write like that. So this is what is this is known as being a functor, and then it was applicative, which meant that there was a function called pure, which had this type. Uh, by the way, pure is sometimes called return, but I try to avoid uh, calling it return because it confuses people with the return in other imperative languages. So I will continue to call this pure. There was this, I don't know what it's called. And then finally, there was this thing, the bind, which is a part of the monad interface. So today we will see some more uh, elements, which or some more types, which have these kind of uh, interfaces. So uh, this is like a hierarchy. If you um, So if you ask Haskell, Haskell would tell you that. So if I ask Haskell what monad is, it will tell me that monad needs to be applicative. So there is this constraint. And If I ask what an applicative is, it, it says that they, it must first be a functor. So this is a hierarchy. Uh, anyway, let's uh, talk about some examples first to see what we can, what else we can do with this concept. So I have several uh, tables over here, and I have represented these tables as lists. So the idea is that uh, there is a phone book which maps names to uh, phone numbers and then there is a registration id table which maps phone numbers to registration numbers and then there is a money owed table which maps registration numbers to uh, the money that the person that particular uh, person owes so let's say that for some application what i want to do is uh, i want to have a a function called name to money and it takes a name and it uh, gives me a gives me a value uh, called maybe double so this is double because if if uh, this because this is double the, the money i have represented the money owed in double so notice that this is a maybe because at any point in going through these three things, you might not find some particular user or it, one of these things might fail. Like maybe this person does have a phone number, but the phone number is not registered with some registration ID or something like that. So actually there is a function called, uh, which we have probably seen before. The function is called lookup. So lookup has this type and lookup also produces maybe B. It, it basically takes a table of like A and B's, like table in this sense, and it produces maybe B. So we will use this function to, actually we can uh, try to use this function right now and see how, what it does. So let's say I do lookup uh, and then I do Bob and then I say, look that up in the phone book and it says, yeah. But if I want to look up, uh, let's say even the phone book there is no even the phone book so it says nothing right so what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to chain all of these lookups in this uh all of these lookups uh across these three tables so let's say that i have been given a name so the first thing i want to do is i would like to produce 
uh, I would like to look up this. So, well, um, maybe I should turn off this extension. Uh, I should never mind. So here I have lookup name phone book and then that gives me that gives me a maybe double because uh, no. Wait. So th this gives me a string which is the which is the type in which I have stored this phone numbers. Maybe I should have created a type per phone number but never mind that for now. So now I have gotten a phone number here. Actually, this is a maybe phone number because the phone number may or may not be there. So I should do a case split on that. And then um, the case split should look like that. So either I have found a phone number or I haven't. So if I have not found a phone number, then this entire lookup fails and I produce nothing. If I have indeed found a phone number, then I do uh, I uh, go to this registration ID table and I do lookup of phone number in the registration ID table, and then I have to case split again. And um, if I have if I have not found something, not found this uh, particular phone number in this table, I again produce nothing. Otherwise, I can I have uh, gotten some registration number and then using that registration number i can look up i can finally do the final lookup in over here and that does the job so let's uh, try to run that oh so i have installed this ex interesting extension which lets me do this running thing in the comments so let me try doing that uh, if I ask for this. So yeah, so it looks at Bob and then it uh, goes like uh, it finds its phone number and then Bob is registered as one and then uh, he owes 200. But yes. Hmm? So then a type of it's a baby of something. Yeah, it in figures out that it has to make the same with the type check. Hmm. So in nothing that you wrote but down at the top happens to have the same type but nothing that's inside, correct? Yes. Uh so actually this otherwise it wouldn't type check. But the type system is doing this certification for figuring out the type that works. Right. So actually, so yeah, actually that is quite interesting. So this nothing is of type maybe double like the uh, this plugin is showing me because that is supposed to be the output type of this function. But this nothing is the output type of this entire thing, which is uh, so this turns out to be uh, what it's basically maybe string because that is what the type of this uh, phone phone numbers are. So this nothing and this nothing are not the same, even though so like how, the, how does it take an hmm? Okay. Yeah. So how does it take an so this nothing is returned by name to money in case this particular thing is nothing. Right. So this. So this has type maybe string because this is doing a lookup in the phone number, right? So that means that this is this nothing is of type maybe string. Maybe I should have said uh, why. Yeah, I can't put a type in the pattern, but uh, but this has type. Yeah. So this nothing has type maybe double because this is. 
like this is like a return value of this entire function yeah so this one also has maybe double but this one has maybe int because this is the registration yeah so the right nothing there always for times when you actually look and it's actually so yes so if i go for if i query this function with bob like since bob has this entire path through all these three things we can figure out what is the uh, money that bob owes but if i go with alice then alice has a phone number and that phone number is registered but that is not there in this particular table so it it will fail over here and it will produce this nothing so we can try that And it produces nothing, right? So doing all this amazing stuff behind the scenes that corresponds with what you were naturally writing down when you were doing graphic coding that was all consistent, just checking the consistency of everything. Yes. So on the other hand, because it's all behind the scenes, there may be nothing, not it's not it's not obvious that when you have nothing goes with nothing, and in fact nothing on one side goes with the nothing on the other. Yeah. Um, so notice that here, when I write this, this is like, a this expression sort of looks like a ladder. So it would look much worse if there were five things, um, Haskell has braces syntax, by the way, I don't like exactly remember how to use it, but I, I prefer the indentation version. So, um, what we are going to do is we are going to define this function called chain maybe, and I'm going to give chain maybe this type. It takes something, some value of type maybe A, and then it produces this, and then it does this. So how would I implement chain maybe? So chain maybe of nothing. And if the first thing is nothing, it's like uh, the first lookup failed, then we don't need to do the second part of the algorithm. If the first thing is some particular value, let's say it's a phone number or something, then we can uh, do the rest of the thing and continue our work over here. So let's say it's just V some value. And then there is this function F. So in that case, mm, I can, I have pattern matched and I can take out this V, which is of type A and I can provide that, uh, provide that uh, V to F then, then uh, F will give me a thing of type maybe B and then that's my answer, right? So there is this function and it is actually super helpful. So let's actually try to write this particular uh, name to money function in terms of this new thing. So again, I take a, a, take a name and then the first thing I do is I look it up in the phone loop. And that is something of type uh, maybe string. So that I will try to use chain and I will try to use chain maybe now. So I will take some that thing of type uh, maybe string and then I will pass it to a function which accepts a string. And so let's put make a lambda over here and like let's give that thing a name. Let's call it uh, num because it's a phone number. And then um, I want to look up that number in the registration ID uh, in the registration ID table. And um, then what I get is yet another yet another thing which is of type uh, maybe int and what I could do is I could do chain maybe, and then I can say that, okay, let's call that int uh, registration because it's a registration ID. And so it's, I'm over here basically. And then I do this. So actually I can try the same, same thing again. 
so it produces uh, so it produces nothing for Alice, but something for Bob. I hope. Yeah. So this works. Um. Uh, never mind. Never mind that uh, linter suggestion. So here actually I have added this extra parenthesis, but they are not necessary because of like the parsing rules. I. Oh, um, so this is a useful thing to know. So let's say that I have a function called LM and what LM does is it figures out whether something is a part of some list or not. So I can write it like that, but I can also, uh, but I can also write it like this. So if there is a function with two arguments, you can use backtick notation to, uh, I apologize if I have not said this before. So the idea is that there is this chain maybe. So the first argument of chain maybe is this, which has type uh, maybe of string because yeah, phone book provides me a string. And then there is this thing, which has this entire thing has takes a string and produces maybe double and that in itself works by first getting a registration ID, which is an int and then passing it on to something which produces, uh, what do you call it? Uh, a double, which is the money owned. Uh, that's a great point. I will give you a better way to parse this. Yeah. So the, there is some pattern matching over here. Like this is a Lambda. Like I'm saying that, like, give this variable, the name num. This is like saying Lambda A, Lambda num, and then something. So, uh, this is like supposed to be parsed like that. That's why I put the parents before. And like, you can imagine that there is another something like that. So the second thing is that like the first. Yes. Does this make sense? So it's not actually pattern matching. I thought it's pattern matching. Oh, the chain maybe is not pattern matching. There is only one pattern matching over here, which is this, but that's like uh, innocent. Yeah, uh, but it is kind of hard to parse and uh, I will get to that. So, but before I get to that, I want everyone to notice something. Uh, notice the signature. Where have you seen something like this before? Does this ring any bells? No? Okay, I will give you the answer. So remember that uh, the bind that we were talking about in last class had type of type this. So this is the same as that, except that instead of IO, I'm saying maybe. You see the similarity over here? So it's basically as if I want something which abstracts over IO and maybe and it like generally put some arbitrary type constructor over here. Makes sense, right? So actually what I defined as chain may be over here is already defined uh, in, in the standard, in the prelude as bind. So this is not the same bind as, same bind as the bind for IO except this bind has a different type and this bind is the bind for maybe and this works perfectly fine um right so i believe so so yeah instead of saying chain maybe i could say this so basically this is like a polymorphic function, just like if map is a polymorphic function, but it's like ad hoc polymorphic in the sense it does something on list, something on else on trees or something else elsewhere. So this is also kind of like that. So the things which have this bind is called a monad. We have seen two monads at this point. One is IO and now we have, now we know that maybe can also be thought of as a monad. So any questions about this? Uh, I will come back to you. Yes. Yes. 
actually we will uh, it, it, there is a good reason why we call it flat map because uh, if we we will later see that lists are monads which are going to come like right next to this and then we will notice that uh, the bind operation uh, if you like think of the list monad instead of the maybe monad or io monad that is concat map or flat map so yeah great um yeah okay so in the last class we saw that when we have a monad when we had the io monad actually we had a special kind of syntax which was the do do syntax so actually the do syntax is not uh, particular to the io monad it's actually it actually works for any monad so i will actually now uh, rewrite this thing with uh, do instead and i will remove all these binds so i will write do over here and i am passing this thing as a lambda and calling it the name num so i will actually write it like that if you remember from last class this thing is a sugar for what i had just before and this thing will be this and this is going to be that and yeah so i can use the do notation in whatever monad i have questions about this no okay um so i can actually ask uh, for information about maybe and then it tells me what all things it's an instance of so it does say that uh, maybe is a monad but maybe is also a functor and applicative so remember that functor and applicatives are things which support this so if i want to show that uh, if i want to show that uh, maybe is um maybe is a functor i have to understand what this if map does so instead of io over here i will have maybe a and maybe b so let's say that uh, instead of just using the money owed from this database i want to add uh, 50.0 to it so i could do this add 50 to money and then let's say i want something like this so what i will do over here is i get this name and then i do name to money prime and uh name so this is gives me a double but but this is just the same thing as that but now this may be either just uh so let's say that i want to case split on this and if the money owed is nothing then i want to do nothing i mean like uh, i mean uh, if i have not found how much money this person owes i could do nothing otherwise i could do just uh, v plus 50.0 so i i could uh, do this addition of 50 this way but there is a simpler way to do this which is simply to say um, first i do name to money of this name and then i just do f map and then i say plus 50 so it goes under that will i work yeah, that should work so it goes under the wrapper of maybe and applies this function right so originally uh, bob was owing 200 i guess and this thing goes inside the wrapper and adds 50 to it so you can use this if map like that uh, there is a little bit of a cool in fix syntax which is which looks like that you can also use that um yeah and there is a function called pure which basically uh if you say pure 50 and then like you you want this pure to specialize to let's say int then it 
it takes 50 and it just becomes just 50 like it puts puts the number 50 in the context of a maybe this is not always useful but sometimes useful i, I think as we see more examples we will see like when this is useful it's kind of like the pure we had in io but here instead of putting it inside an io context it puts it inside a maybe context mm. so the next thing i want to talk about is lists like one of you suggested before that any questions okay so i will start with this example uh, actually this thing called contact map and this is a very useful function so ignore this foldable for now but think of it as an uh, as a list so what does contact map do so contact map is basically uh, so let's say i have hmm, so let's say i take x and i produce x plus 1 and x plus 2 and i have a function which is 1 to 1 through 10 so i i basically apply map on them and that gives me a lot of lists and then i concat all of those output lists together so it concat map is just concat dot map dot in the sense of compose so yeah um let me use a few functions to illustrate with some more examples when this is useful and let's say that i have a chess board and in chess there is the rule that the knight basically moves uh, two steps in some direction and one step in an orthogonal direction so let's say that my knight is at x y um what I will do is I will do where I comes from minus two comma two. So this is I is either minus two comma two and J is either minus one comma one. So I want either that. So this is like uh, oh. So I either want that to like either want to go uh, plus two or minus two in the x direction, or it could be the other way around in the sense that I could do that in the uh, y direction, and this would give me all the moves of the of of a knight in a single move. So let's do knight move um, zero zero. So from zero, it like it it should have eight moves like like that like that. And so it, it has all these eight moves, right? But let's say that I want to know how where the knight can go in uh, two moves. If I wanted to do that, I could write it like this. then basically it, it does like it moves the knight once and then it gets a bunch of places where the knight is now and then it applies knights moves to each of those things and then it gets a list of lists but then it contacts to knights them and it gets a single list so i can do knight and uh, i'm not going to verify this but uh, I, I trust this is correct so i can actually do knight three and then Knight three x y would be uh, just this thing twice, basically. So, um, so yeah, concat map is a very useful function. And actually, uh, we should think of concat map as, uh, or rather concat map is what makes the list a monad. So let's see the type of concat map or 
actually i will give it a type so the type of concat map over here so this was the type of chain maybe so the type of concat map is it takes some function a to list of b and then it takes uh and then it takes uh who um and it, it takes a list of a and then it produces a list of b so it's almost like this except that this thing and uh and this thing have been the order of these arguments have been reversed so actually like the monad interface uh gives me something like this also like which you can write in terms of the other thing it, it's basically having the uh, order of the arguments reversed there is a, a function like that in the monad interface which looks like that but uh, there is nothing fancy about it it's just uh, one is more useful in one context and another but you can get one from the other so in fact there is a function called flip which takes a function and it reverses the order of the arguments so um so let, let let me write uh let me rewrite this concat map thing with the monadic functions so using this uh the arrow that goes on that side i could write it like this so think of this as concat map basically like you can uh, if you ignore this part if you ignore that part this is doing taking this thing first and then applying concat map night move to it again and i guess it produces the same output so you could write it like this and actually you can write it like this as well so yeah you could write it like that as well um so one thing to note here is that you might think that this looks a little bit asymmetric so if you want to fix that what you could do is you could think that this xy is put in a singleton list so and then you do concat map on that singleton list which is applying uh, the night map to so actually let me make that another function because then we can compare them so there is this and then let's let's do this so this won't work because this thing expects a list like uh, when i use chain like when i use this bind this concat map is supposed to be used on a list but this is not a list so what i could do is i could put a singleton over here so mm, I I did this small transformation which which puts this inside the singleton, but this is actually known as pure because in the context of lists, the pure function basically constructs the constructs the singleton list which contains that element. So the, the this actually is like a general law about monads that if you have a function, uh, let's say the function's type is uh, a arrow. uh mb then you you can have this particular uh thing which you uh hang on which you write like this and this would be the same as doing this in the case of lists this means that uh applying in this particular context it means that night move of x comma y is the same as starting with the singleton list that contains this and then applying concat map night move on this you, and you can obviously see that 
these two things are the same but this is like a law that must hold whenever you have a monad so just like in the last class i talked about the laws that functors must obey there are certain laws that monads must obey i don't remember that them all but when you implement your monad like some monad of your own you should check that you are obeying those laws and the monad law that you should check that your monad satisfies mm. so we understand what this bind is in the context of lists it is just concat map maybe with like the arguments reversed but and what is this pure this pure basically um this pure basically put something inside a singleton list so then there is the question that if something is a functor it should have the if map and what is the if map in the context of lists so in the context of lists there is a function if map and that does this and what is that function yeah this function is simply map so in fact this is called if map because it was a generalization of map right so th this is how a uh, list is a functor because it, we have already seen that before but it's also a monad because it the bind is simply concat map so if it is a monad we can actually use do notation here so let me use a different example for that so i had used this example somewhere before i guess i have this triangles and this this triangles are tuples a b c where a comes from 1 to 10 b comes from 1 to 10 c comes from 1 to 10 and we had seen this example before and we can evaluate this first right um, it's not very useful I just erase this so yeah these are the triangles and then we looked at this notation and it's kind of mysterious it's nice but how does it really work well the answer is that um, this is basically nothing but actually using do notation so i can actually write this like that and this will do the same job right so you can uh, try to rewrite this in terms of concat map in order to understand what is happening over here maybe instead of using three things maybe using two things is a better idea um so basically let's say that i start with i, I let's say that i want to uh, figure out all possible combinations of or, or all possible uh, ways to choose two things from one to five so i start with one to five and then i do concat map and i have to put something here which takes some takes some element and produces a list so let's call that element x and uh, let's say that i want to use that x to do something and the thing I will do is I will choose another Y and that Y will come from another list uh, called one to, five, one, 1 to 5. And then let's say that the, that thing is called Y like we wanted it to be. And then the list that I produce is X comma Y. Right. Okay. So. Right, it basically works the same way as this does or this list comprehension does. Does this make sense? I, I think this is a lot of information. Um, so if you have questions, please ask. Okay, then uh, 
yeah when you see this kind of computations it kind of is a bit jarring at first but it does make sense if you think about it for some time so you may want to review this material uh, at your own pace at some point so actually all uh, list comprehensions are actually kind of like do notations in disguise this is just a uh, nice syntax for do notations for lists and uh, i am not completely sure about this but i think there is some language extensions called monad comprehensions which l lets you turn arbitrary monads into list comprehensions as well so uh, i i don't know the details about that but uh, this is how the list comprehension works under the hood there are a few details which i actually didn't talk about but that's okay i guess um so now let's try to take this example further and i i want to think of this uh so one way to think of monads is to think of computations inside some context so let's say i have an int without any monad so it's like a pure int but if i have that int in the io monad it means that there is a context which is the context of io that that int comes from some file or some network call or something like that if it is in the context of maybe then the idea is that it's an i it, that it could either be there or it could be not there so similarly we want to think of this lists as some kind of uh, computations that are embedded in some context so in particular the idea is idea of uh, the list monad is to represent non determinism so normally when we have a have our code it basic or some function it basically produces one one answer for an output uh, one out uh, one output for a specific input but what if we wanted to have a function that produces multiple outputs so a normal function looks like this a to b but if i wanted a multi function or some kind of non deterministic function i could think it takes an a and it produces multiple answers so this is the way that i am going to think about the list monad so actually uh let me take this idea and put this in an example so i the example that i am going to use is the example of permutations so uh, first i should define an auxiliary function so i will call this function insert and insert takes a position uh, this is not a very uh, efficient thing for list like there are other data structures you can use if you want to do this but uh, for simplicity i will just use this now and what i will do is i will so this takes the first element puts that and then uh, chops off the thing and puts the thing right makes sense i guess so let's uh, just test this very quickly uh, insert let's say insert 3 uh, at position 3 let's say i want to insert the character a and let's say the characters which i have are uh, w x y and z so yeah this this seems to work which is good so now i will define this permutations function and given a list it will produce all possible permutations but uh, i want to think of i want you to, to think of this permutations functions in the following way that uh, it given a given a list it produces an arbitrary permutation but uh, instead of thinking about all possible permutations I, if i want to think about it as a producing an arbitrary permutation by saying arbitrary i don't necessarily mean random the difference is that in random i have a specific probability distribution i won't do that here i would just want to write my code in a way that makes it look like i'm taking an arbitrary element and going from there so let's try to put that in action so if the list is empty then i do this so what does this do what does this line of code do it basically is the same, same as this but i will write it like that because i want to think of it as uh being a computation which produces just one answer so in the list monad uh 
our computations can produce multiple answers but in in the case that we are pure we produce just one answer that is why we have written pure over here so now let's say that uh, there are multiple things in my list and we will do the same trick as usual but let's try to understand that trick differently so what i will do is i will uh mm, yeah so i will pick an arbitrary position and how do i pick an arbitrary position well there is this thing which gives me a gives me a list of possible positions and i will pick an arbitrary element from it let's call that arbitrary index n or yeah i guess n is a good enough name and then what i will do is i will produce an arbitrary permutation and what do i mean by that so if i go permutations excess this will give me a lot of permutations but from that i want to pick an arbitrary one and now i have an arbitrary index and an arbit arbitrary permutation and the thing that i want to produce is i want to put the first element which i withhold when i was producing the when i was rearranging the rest of it and i want to produce this i took an arbitrary permutation of the rest of the elements i want to put that put this thing in an arbitrary location so this is very arbitrary code so yeah and let's see if that works apparently there is something called permutations in data dot h but why does that matter ah am i importing why am i importing this i don't know so yeah that seems to work yes question do i start with right permutation number 2 you know any one of the casting of structures correct succession for Mm. I don't know. Uh, usually, this is very. Yeah, that is true. Um. So I don't. Yeah. I don't think people usually write. I don't think people would actually write the permutation code this way. Um, actually, no, I, I, I think it's. I, I think this might be considered a stunt. Yeah. Rather than put a yeah. And that's because the reasoning about it. Yeah. Actually, if even in uh, even if you look at like non-deterministic uh, things in complexity theory, I think there are very few. proofs or algorithms which take advantage of non determinism there is a, a theorem called nl equals co nl i don't know if you know about this but nl is like the class which is non deterministic logarithmic like non deterministic polynomial but this is non deterministic log space if you look up this proof like i uh, that proof is the only proof i know which uses non deterministic non determinism very yeah, extensively yeah but that is the only example i know where like non determinism is used in a very crazy way but yeah so yeah. i do suspect that there are cases where going to the style it's 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 so it's it's developing the software and that's what they i don't think it would be more efficient but i thought it, sure, but this particular case Like yeah, there but, is a way. But there, there are situations that so lots of algorithms are very likely to do right, where they're very imperative in nature, and those things can generally be expressed, I assume, in this framework for certain functions. In terms of THC, that you look at the table for the same type of code. Yeah. Job is good as long as, 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 long as everything's 
by the way, I promised one of you that I would show how to write permutations with sort of with, with in terms of concat map. This is kind of like that because uh, these things desugar to concat map. So you can try to think about how to write this in terms of concat map. Mm. So all right, before I move on, any other questions or comments about yeah? N is a number. So this is a list. I'm saying that I'm drawing from that list. And you can either think of it as drawing an arbitrary element or basically like what is happening is I'm drawing all possible elements, right? So this basically goes down all possible branches of this computation. That is the way to think about this. So, uh, so we have talked about two monads. Well, three, if you include the one in the last class. I'm going to talk about another monad now, which is called the state monad. So let's see if I have this written now. Uh, so I have this binary tree. Uh, this is very similar to what you have in the assignment, except that this is not necessarily infinite. So this tree is either a nil node or a const or a, or it's, or, or it's a node. I, you could have called this fork. I have called it node here for some reason, which is fine. And uh, what I want to do over here is uh, I want to define a function called abstract and abstract will assume that there is a type A on which equality is meaningful. And it will take a, a tree whose nodes are nodes have values of type a and then it will produce a tree of int such that if there are two nodes are uh, two nodes in this tree with the same value of uh, same value or equal value rather then they will be represented using the same integer so does the problem statement make sense okay so this is what i want to uh, define so Let's leave this as undefined for now. So this is like, uh, I think in Python, you would call, say this as pass or sometimes you put dot, dot, dot. In Haskell, the convention is to write undefined. So this is undefined for now. And uh, what is, how would you solve this problem? Uh, any ideas on how you would want to solve this problem usually? So what I would do is I would uh, take a table. I, I, I would basically traverse down this tree and I would have a, uh, I would have a table which basically records uh, what things have been given what ID. And when I encounter a new element, I will query that table and check whether that has been given an ID. If it has been, then I, uh, then I can, use that ID. If it has not been, then I add that, add that extra fact to the table that I'm going to give this an ID and does that make sense? Right? So, uh, notice that what I'm doing over here is I'm kind of mutating this table in the sense that this table big, like, uh, this table, the amount of information in this table, uh, grows. So I kind of need a mechanism to, uh, add things to a table and so one way to do that is to use an auxiliary parameter to your function or auxiliary argument to your function. And you just add the thing to your auxiliary argument. Um, but in some cases that may not always be a good idea because you might have too many arguments or something like that. So I will show you another way to uh, phrase the thing, but it essentially de sugars to the same thing as adding another argument. Like it's just more like fanciful syntax for adding another argument. So. Um, I will copy some things from my code because I don't, we don't have that much time. So what I will do over here is that I'm calling this list of a, a table, but remember that this is just a synonym. So, um, how this is going to work. Is I can, so, so let's say that. Uh, the elements of the tree were originally characters. So I could 
i i could have some the table will basically store it like that and if i do find index it tells me that it's going to be abstracted with two and if i have this table and then i do add to table and then i say i want to add c then basically i get b a c and then if i wanted to use so uh, there is this cool trick in ghci that if you want to refer to the last result you can call it it so i can do find index c then it it gives me just three so this is how i add elements to the add elements to the uh, to the table and query the table and notice that the way i have you uh, written this function is maybe so if this table if this table does not have that element so it will tell me it's nothing right so hmm. what i am going to do now is i am going to write this help function which has type like that it takes a tree of a so what does this mean so first of all to enable this thing i have to write uh, import control dot monad dot state which i will put over here and i have to go over here uh, package dot yaml and over here i will uh, add this extra library so this library allows me to import this uh, control dot monad uh, dot state but what does this mean so again like uh, how i thought of list of a as a uh, a embedded in some context so here also i would like to think that this is a tree this is kind of like this thing right this abstract and this abstract ox they are very similar except that here it produces a pure tree int but here it produces a pure tree int except that it is in some context and here the context is called state in fact it state table a so the idea is that uh, i am operating inside an environment where i have a table as state and i can update that table or place queries on that table so you you should think of this as, as something like this so uh okay so let's first call this undefined so i want to uh first talk about certain useful functions that are available inside the state monad so there is a function called get and basically let's say that the state is so this is the state that we are using the thing that we are going to mutate or store our information in and let's call this the result so regardless of what the result is i can always use this get function to get whatever the current state is that is one thing um no i can do this which means that it is like wrapped inside the state i can't get it out but uh, i have to use like monadic things to do this i i, will, I this will become clear when i use these things and then there is put which updates the state basically so it does mm, uh so no my bad uh so if i have a particular state i can embed that in this so it it, it doesn't give me a, anything to work with but it basically just updates the state with the thing that i have given so let's uh, go ahead and use these things so well abstract talks if the node is nil so maybe i should uh, close this and so that the type of the tree is visible so if the node is nil then i don't have to do anything but then i will say pure nil instead of just nil because uh, i am inside a monadic context right so 
otherwise i have a node in which i have some information some value of type a which is uh, which i am calling x and then there are two subtrees t1 and t2 so if i have this case what i am going to do is as follows i am going to get what is in the current table so i i do get and right now it's complaining because the last blow thing in the do block but we will fix that so this get gets whatever the current state is and we call that current state car table and then mm, we have this so now we have this table uh, particular uh, table and what we are going to do is we are going to use this find index function to find to check whether uh, this particular node which we are encountering ha has already been put in the table or not and i am going to write it like that and this is going to give me a can i oh great so so this is going to give me a maybe if it's a so if it's a mm, yeah so if there is nothing right now i should uh, put actually let me interchange these things because if there is something in the table already i can just use that so uh, i i could just use whatever is whatever is the look uh, answer that i got from this lookup but if there is nothing then i have to do some work by modifying the table so i will say let new table equals uh, so yeah if i want to use do notation then i want to make both of these things inside a monad so actually let me not put the do add to table x in so oh, but i do want to be in a monad because here i am actually mutating the state so yeah here i will write pure uh, because here i am not uh, mutating the state at all and um yeah then in this yeah so i have gotten this new table where the new node is added and then i i update this new table right and what i need to uh, use for use for this id let's call that uh, that is basically the length of the new table or i i could do uh, i could do that and then that finds the index in the new table that i have found over here uh, okay so i have to put two okay okay so now uh, actually let me do length because so since this uh, table uh, this add to table basically increases the length of the table by one i might as well use length instead of trying to recompute this so so now i have either gotten this number or this number but these are inside the state monad so i will call this thing in prime just to get the value out of this just a second okay yeah it works um so now i have ignored this line for a second so now i have this n prime which i have done by getting this computation which may or may not up involve updating the state but it or uh, does involve uh, looking up whatever is in the state and using that information so now that i have that i can make a new tree and in that tree 
I so now I could do uh, so now I can update the subtrees. I, I mean I can find the abstractions of the subtrees and I can call that abstract ox t1. And this is the new subtree which I get after replacing the nodes with those values, like the new IDs. And then I can call this tree two. And then I can use this in prime. Right. So this basically goes and updates the it basically uh, make gives me a tree which has this new IDs, but it does this by mutating this state which I am uh, hiding inside uh, this table over here. Which I am when I'm writing this function, I am not mentioning this the tip the table as a uh, auxiliary argument. Does this make somewhat make some sense? Yeah. Is that yes. Thank you. I hope this makes some sense. So now I have gotten this thing, which has this type, but this thing, this table was just there to uh, do the computation. We don't need to output like this table. We, this doesn't have to be a part of the output because uh, ultimately we just want this. So there is this function called uh, run state. And I, uh, so what there is this function called eval state and eval state has this type. It takes a stateful computation. Like this is a stateful computation or a stateful value. And then it takes some initial state to start with, and then it produces the result. Right. So in this case, what is the initial state that I want? I want a single, I want a table, which is empty, which does not have any, uh, characters or anything assigned to any particular integers. And then when this computation happens, this will go on adding things to the state. And ultimately when I do this, it, it will like do, it will, uh, compute this value. And then it will give me this thing over here in three. End. So let me write that. Run state. Oh, it's called eval state. Eval state. Uh, so call the tree T, and then I do abstract ox T, and then I have to give it a initial state, which is the empty list, like we did. So yeah, now we should try to run this. So I have a tree example, which is a tree with characters. Right. Uh, oh, maybe I should use the apple. Or, or not. So I have this example tree, which is a tree of characters. And when I abstract this, like this B and this B, they should be replaced with the same integer. So, uh, yeah, what am I doing? So I want to use abstract and then it takes in a tree and then it gives me a tree with integers. So I do abstract tree example, and then it produces that. So this does have one and one over here because both of these are B's and for A it has got and got two. So yeah, it does satisfy the contract that we wanted. So, uh, questions about this. Uh, so the new table is a new table. Uh, it's basically this modified table, right? So uh, what it does is that, uh, so at any point, this computation has a state and you can either, you can uh, look up that state and use it to do something, but you can also modify that state. 
so it says that okay from now on the table is going to be this instead of what it was before hmm? no, at any point you have just one right so actually let me explain uh, this more carefully so right now like after you go through like after you go through this code like let's think of it in, a, in an imperative way here i have put the new table as the state so when it tries to recurse on this subtree it doesn't see the original table but it looks at the looks at the table that i have put right now and then it goes here and it will uh, go and put some more extra things in this thing so those ids that this uh, this call has put those will be seen by this because this may have modified the state right any other questions so actually i want to say something about this this looks like this is some kind of magical monad but it it's actually not this is just syntactic sugar for pure functions in particular what those pure functions do is they just add an auxiliary argument but if you did not want to write the auxiliary argument yourself for some reason you could have used this machinery so actually in the lecture notes i will include some explanation as to how to uh, write this particular thing in case you did not want to import it from some other library and you wanted to import like write this stateful like it define this functions get put eval state in by yourself you can do that actually so this is um this monad is actually purely functional in the sense that you can implement it yourself without using any io or anything like that there are a couple of other ways to use state which are more efficient but um, i won't have time to talk about that any other questions okay thank you for coming to the class so i will see you next week so in the next two weeks what we are going to do is we are going to look at a large example i'm going to program a tic tac toe game and uh, it should uh, yeah that that should take two classes because there are quite a few things in that and i will also put up the code beforehand so that you can play with it if you want so thank you